Welcome to EWN On The Couch, where we catch up with your favorites both on and off the field. Now, today's guest, she played with Banyana Banyana in their very first international match. And now she's at the helm of the very first group of Banyana players that will head to the World Cup in France. Passion and commitment are two words that spring to mind when thinking of Banyana Banyana coach Desiree Ellis. As a former player and then as the coach of the national team, she has led them to many victories including two Kasafa Cup titles and World Cup qualification. Ellis hopes to continue growing the game in South Africa. Coach Desiree Ellis. I feel like I, we should have a cheering squad here. So I'm gonna, we'll get one for you next time. <laughs> coach, thank you so much for joining us on the couch today. Uh, thanks for having me. You just come back from France after experiencing what it will be like to be there as a, as a team part of the World mm. Cup. How was that? Amazing. You know, the draw itself was very professional. It was very amazing, you know. Meeting the coaches, someone like Jill Ellis, um, who's won it all, um, very humble, and said we were, she was very happy, was jumping around in a lounge when we qualified. Um, so it was really great. And I watched the interview of you earlier this year and you, they asked you what would your one goal still want to be with the team? And you said to qualify for the World Cup. It's happened. Have you had your happy dance, freak out <laughs> moment yet? Well, um, uh, immediately after we qualified, you know, running onto the pitch, not knowing what to do with yourself, obviously, everybody trying to hug everybody. Some were praying, some were crying, some were hugging each other. It was amazing moments, um, you know, because I said it is not negotiable, you know, after under 17 team qualified for the World Cup. And after everything that, you know, the sponsor Cecil and Safa and coaches that have come before and players, that they have put in, so it was not negotiable. And with the preparation we had, you know, that really prepared us, but uh, preparation doesn't guarantee you success, but uh, it really helps you. And uh, I think the players were magnificent, but more importantly, the staff, you know, don't get a mention. The assistant coach, Tina Sonke Mbuli, the analyst to really strategize and work the opposition out and then bring that forth. And then we come up with a plan and then the players have, have to execute the plan and they were magnificent, you know the medical team who made sure that we had very few injuries and everybody else, I mean, I look beautiful, eh? So, <laughs> the kit manager, the security, the driver, you know, media officer, goalkeeper coach, Everyone. a fitness trainer, they all play a part. It's absolutely amazing. And you keep mentioning also, like this, the past two years actually, everyone's been saying how special this group of Banyana Banyana players. And I love, Geneva actually said, I think it was before your first game against Nigeria, she said, um, yeah, everyone talks about Nigeria having all these superstars and then she paused and said, well, we have them too. And I love that. Mm -hmm. The fact that we have players playing on overseas clubs, has that helped to maybe get this group to the World Cup? Well, it has helped, you know, Janine, uh, Tembi and, and Linda um, of the group that, uh, you know, went to Houston Dash for a year. And it shows training at the high level. Uh, then a few where Johnny left just before AFCON um, and then Rhoda left as well. But uh, a few with Johnny, you could see she's a, she's a happy person coming back and playing in the team but the experience of those also the experience of players that have been in this situation before there was a whole group you know that was there in 2014 when we did not qualify so I think that has driven them but more importantly the group of players who, who felt on, and who thought you know this is our last opportunity to go to the World Cup they were the senior ones um, really bringing the others together um, and really motivating everyone and even when we won our first game against Nigeria you know they were so focused, so motivated. When we won the semi-final to qualify for the World Cup, yes, we all celebrated that night. I mean, I don't think a few days after that that I've really slept properly, you know, pinching myself and it's happening, yeah. you know, realizing the magnitude of what we've done. But immediately, the two days after that, the players refocused for the final. And we were just disappointed, you know, that we couldn't, couldn't bring the cup mm -hmm. home. But I think the players gave the all. You know, penalties is a lottery and you can practice and practice, but the pressure in the penalty shootout is different and I think with Nigeria being there on many occasions in that position, they knew how to close it out but you know we can only get better kind of out of the experience that we gained out of this. And that's the thing is I want to say now the hard work begins but it actually just continues. I mean the World Cup is a few months away if mm -hmm. we can say that. Uh, what now? What's happening now? How is the prep looking with the squad? Well as I said we had good prep but we've got to triple our efforts in all departments you know not just in our preparation, but our planning as well, and most importantly, our execution. You know, our president went to the 2018 World Cup and he came back and he said, you have to be fit, and I agree with him, because we were in superb condition for AFCON, but we've got to go a couple of levels up, because yeah. I mean, this, is, this, is, the world, this yeah. is the World Cup, you know. We've been to back-to-back -back Olympics, but everybody wants to play at the World Cup, and you know, we've competed at the Olympics, but we want to go there and make sure 
that when we do leave the tournament and tournament's over, that people remember Banyana because at the draw it was strange actually, you know, you had all these countries coming up to you and wanting to play you, France, you know, Canada, all these countries and not so long ago, you know, you would have thought, who wants to, who wants to play Banyana Banyana? So we're really fortunate that wow. we have some good prep coming up this year, you know. We play the Netherlands, who are the current world champions. They're ranked number seven uh, in the world. Then we play Sweden as well, also in January, in my hometown of Cape Town, uh, obviously. <laughs> you know, um, and that's also happening now in, in January. Uh, we also play the USA, who are currently it's the number one, one ranked team in the world, you know. And I'm sure there are a lot, a lot of other good things happening in the pipeline because we really, really have to triple our efforts. Coach, thank you so much. Before you go, though, we play a little game we call <laughs> Just Be <laughs> Honest, okay, all right. Only right. yes or no answers. Okay. So I can you say maybe? No, no, maybe. <laughs> no, maybe. Would you ever enter MasterChef? No. Have you ever overslept for training and then pretended it was a strat session? Never. Okay, dedication. Do you think the Proteas can lift the World Cup next year? Yes. Ah. Have you ever skydived? No. Okay, that's. <laughs> no. I feel there's something deeper there, but anyway. <laughs> Jose Mourinho, yes or no? Uh, <laughs> at the moment, no. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Coach, thank you so much for joining us on the couch. And thank you for your dedication to the game of football and for getting our ladies just over that, that hurdle. And now the work starts. Eh? Thank you very much for having me. I wish everyone a great feast of season. Drive safely and spend as much time as you can with the family. There we go. Coach Shedet, you have to do it. Thanks for joining us on the couch.